to respect our neighbors would you guys might that way come on in as close as you can to the booth so that we're not in other people's booth please okay so come on in we can come around here if you guys will squeeze in also a little bit into the booth look at you guys are so handsome that there's this many people coming just to see your pretty faces is that amazing well barry mm, questionable oh you got the hair you do have the do you do have the do so come on in, squeeze in a little bit. We're going to be started here in a second. And I think that we've got uh, everybody seated here. So you guys ready? <laughs> With that said, I want to take and clarify something right now. I'm going to walk behind these guys. The reason why we put you tall guys at the end is because you're as tall as I am sitting down. So yeah. we're going to have to come up in here. So here's the deal. That's not going to work. Okay, I'm going to have to come out here, guys, and get it away from there. Yep. So, um, gentlemen, what we want to do is we are not, it's a smack down, we're not going there, are we? Nope. Is that, what you guys don't know, is that we're going to work very closely together to help all of you. So while we've got the Rock'em Sock'em robots on, that's the opposite direction of where we're going. But what we did do is because you guys like conflict, we brought you in off that, uh, off of that uh, ideal, but we're actually not going there at all. So here's the guidelines, gentlemen, is that we're going to try to keep... The, we're going to give you a time at the end to tell us about something great that's going on with your products at CO 2019. Each one of you, ironically, I've worked with all of you during this week. And I want to tell you what I saw in your booths was absolutely amazing. Uh, you guys, first off, all of your companies has changed the game for detailers. So on behalf of the entire, as a guy that started out, when I was testing your coatings in the very early days, that's all I was is I, I own a successful detailing company and all of you have changed and inspired my life. So before we go on, each one of you, I've worked with each one of your products. How cool is that? And I'm gonna tell you, each and every one of them, no matter what you guys choose, they're good products. And you know what? If you listen to these gentlemen and their teams, they will change your lives. And if they haven't already, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing there's a few of you that are here right now where your life's completely changed by using these products. How cool is that? How cool is it? Yeah. Yeah. We've got a panel sitting right here that has changed all of our lives. And guess what? I don't think that's gonna change much. Matter of fact, if you keep an open mind, I think they're gonna continue to change your life quite a bit. The other thing is, is let's talk about, Jason Rose and I are talking a few days ago. And, you know, we come out of an era to where we had 
uh, a lot of bare, uh, bare fist fighting in the detailing industry. And we are bare knuckled. You know, we went at it hard. And J Jason and I even had our battles, right? It's kind of where the co and, 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 and eight years ago, I had the vision with my, my wife, Diane, to put on a event that would kind of settle that down. And we think we've less, left an impression on that. It's kind of where the coding industry is right now. It's a little bare knuckle, much like the detailing segment was. It still is, to a great degree. But I want to take and have these gentlemen here and their teams join us in taking and evolving to the next level within the coding industry. And we can't do it without you guys, and they can't do it without us, the detail. So with that, let's go ahead and start. So we're going to go ahead and that extra mic. Do we have that extra mic out? So since you're there, we'll go ahead and start on that end. And just introduce yourself and your company, would you? Okay, I'm, my name is Robert Earl. Um, so yeah, I'm Managing Director, CEO, whatever you want to call it, of G-Tenic. Um, uh, my name is Barry Thiel. I am one of the founding partners of SB3 Coatings International. Uh, like a lot of you guys, I detail and I put the same passion of our business like I used to as a detailer as well. But that's it. Good morning, my name is Ray Duran. I'm the CEO of Glass Parents. I want to first of all thank everyone on the panel for joining us this morning. It's going to be a great event. Uh, Brenny Doyle, obviously, for hosting, and then uh, Bob Phillips for uh, entertaining us at this booth. Uh, I really look forward to this. So. Thanks for coming out. And then guys, let me give you a little coach. You guys are talking to the mic. Bring it right up to your chin. Just touch that chin. I don't know if you'll hear me anyway. Joel Lapom, uh, President and Director of IGL Coatings North America, Caribbean, Latin America, and a little bit of Central. So thank you for coming, everybody. Hopefully you learned something that you didn't know about all of us. Hi, I'm Dave Phillips. I'm Vice President of PNS Sales and uh, Operations, and running the basically running the day-to-day -day operations of PNS Sales. Also responsible for most of the formulations for the product. So, thank you. Hi, I'm Peter Dibich. I'm the founder of Ceramic Pro Americas. Ceramic Pro, we have about 5,000 stores globally, and um, I'm basically more in charge of the marketing than the. the, the the, the, the car, I'm not a, really a car guy. I'm more a business guy, that's kind of what I'm trying to say. And uh, yeah, that's about it. I've seen your cars, can I drive them? Yeah, I like to drive nice cars. There you go, I see you. there you go, I like it, I like it. Since we, we, since we started on that end, we're gonna go ahead and start on this end and go right back around the direction. So, gentlemen, uh, we all know that coatings have been an absolute game changer and, and cr really created an industry of its own. Is this sustainable long term? I believe it is. I believe that it also depends on how we, uh, the, the five of us here on the, or six, on the panel. I think it's kind of up to us to um, establish an association. I've always talked about that. And I think we were kind of like, you know, the dairy farmers. You know, they had a campaign about milk. And I think if we could team up, we can run campaigns, making sure that the awareness is out there amongst the, uh, the consumers. I think it's going to be a sustainable business. Great response. Pass the mic down. Uh, yeah, I believe it is uh, because what's, what's been built in this industry is real value. <coughs> Bob and I came into the, uh, into the equation about five years ago working with Rennie, and the first thing we were wondering was, well, was this going to be more smoke and mirror? going to be something that you know we've seen in the industry before or was there's a real value and what these gentlemen have all produced I think in the industry is real value and something that the consumer can see feel touch and uh, respect totally agree with everything was said I think what's important is um, amongst ourselves this one up. sustainability again very important uh, I'm going to talk about eco-friendliness and uh, responsible manufacturing, especially when dealing with chemicals. So we need to be responsible as manufacturers to make sure that the products you use are the safest products that you need to be using so that in the future you're safe and uh, carry on the industry. It won't be sustainable if we're not here to lay it down. 
sustainability is really imperative, I think, about all of us on this panel. I think Peter's 100% right in forming an organization, a committee that leads by example. Um, you know, oftentimes it's explained that the detailer said this, the detailer said that, and I think we have to take a uh, look in the mirror. It starts with the self-inventory and saying, it starts with us as leadership and it trickles itself down. Uh, Peter, uh, I didn't realize you were in charge of marketing. It's kind of weird holding something on my chin, but uh, you know, one thing I think Sarah looks really you. sexy, by the way. Thank you. Actually, you don't need to do that. I just I wanted to see if I could make you do it. All right, great. Uh, one thing I think it's pr pretty remarkable, and I think you have to give kudos to Ceramic Pro, is their initial marketing strategy uh, really led to codings in themselves taking place to the end user and the interest from the end user. Uh, and that's what you do from it from there that I think is imperative. So sustainability is definitely in play. Um, it would be really great to try to get people on the same level playing field where price structures, quality of applications, those are the things that are going to really make the difference in the sustainability from an end user and a consumer. So we've got a lot of things that we'll talk about as a company, uh, but I definitely think the market sector has the ability to be sustainable long term. I uh, personally, I don't think... Hold that mic up. Right after that chant, that hairy chant. <laughs> Trying to find out which one. Yeah? Um, <laughs> so listen, here we go. This one right here. This one right here. This one right here. All right, I got it. No, seriously, I think, I always try to look at it differently. I'm sitting in a league of gentlemen, they're all business owners, that have had huge success with their brands. I'm kind of like the outcast, the detailer that said, I'm going to do this and adventure into it, make it happen. And we did. Um, Sustainability, I think, is important, but it's, it, like Peter said, it's complete awareness for the entire industry. Uh, with that said, I think, yeah, ceramic coatings are going to be here for a long time. I think... Uh, <coughs> your, your hair might have uh, shortened. There it is. There it is. Sorry about that. But I think for detailers, I'm good now, I think. All right, for detailers, I think we need to look at other avenues. There's cars. But we're no longer just detailing vehicles anymore. We're in boats, we're in homes, aviation, all that stuff. And I think what Ceramic Coatings has allowed detailers to do is, in today's generation, build a real, build a real business, basically, I apologize. But build a real business, a business that's profitable. But at the same time, if we companies get greedy, detailers get greedy, we'll fold. I think for us, it's up to us to, like Peter said, get the market out there, educate the consumer, but it doesn't stop with cars. And I think being in the coding industry, we all realize what can be done. We just don't do it yet. We don't push it as hard. And now we're seeing detailers get more profitable. Businesses making more money. Detailers who are now just making $100,000 a year. There's shops that are doing millions of dollars a year now. Now that they got the money and they've got, you know, the, the power, I guess you could say, they're going to begin to adventure into other things. And I think that's where ceramic coating companies like ourselves need to step up. But it's not just us. It, it takes everybody. It takes the detailers to also do things like that as well. But, but that's it. Okay. Um, yeah, echoing, I guess, a lot of what's already been said. Um, I think one of the most important things is to look at it from the consumer's point of view. Um, you know, from the consumer's point of view, they're getting real value on this. They're getting durability, so they're getting a detail that lasts longer, and, and that's never going back. Um, you know, it, it's a ride. That is something they know they're getting the durability. They know they're getting you know the hard work that goes into detailing a car. You know, the hours that goes into it. You know, it's it's heartbreaking if you know that that's only going to last a few months. Um, and from the consumer's point, does that go? So from the consumer's point of view, um, you know that is that is real value, and, and and we've always got to be aware that we're delivering value, and it's always got to be to the consumer. And I think I think I think the, the industry, you know, we've been now going since um, 2002 um, when the industry started. You know, when we first got involved with it. Uh, in the UK, in the UK, they were lucky to get around about three hundred pounds to do a detail. Um, and, and Hold on, I'll get better. 
So, um, yeah, back then, back in kind of 2002, 2000, 2003, the early 2000s, consumers didn't know what a detail was. Um, it was very difficult to explain it to them. Um, and now the, the price points were low. People were putting in crazy hours. People were flaunting on detailing circles of how many hours they put in, and they only charged 300 pounds. So I'd be looking at that going, um, yeah, <laughs> not a good place to be. It has now changed dramatically. And I think we're all, you know, companies, all the ceramic companies, we are part of that in terms of ensuring, you know, it is an education process to educate the consumer the amount of hours that goes into a detail, how long it's going to last, the guarantees, how much satisfaction they're going to get from that. I, it's never going to go back. Well, the great point is, uh, as detailers, as professionals, I'm going to put the responsibility, I think all these were really, really valuable responses. With that, this panel right here is tiny compared to the army that's out here. If these companies go and educate and you guys don't listen, we as an industry can do more damage than they can ever do. And so you need to be willing to listen and take advice and take direction. These folks have spent tens of millions of dollars doing the research, doing the development and so forth. So when you put a message out, it's very important that this audience listens. Wouldn't you agree? Okay, so now, Let's go ahead and take and start again from this end. And we're just going to start mixing it up so everybody gets a little bit of them. So some of the questions, where these questions came from, is the last two days, I've had at least 100 detailers come to me. And they've been saying, hey, are you going to ask this? I didn't think that was going to happen. So my questions completely changed. That's why I didn't get them out earlier, because every day I was getting, I'd get the, 10, the same 10 or 12 questions. So this is where it came from. Detailers, one of the biggest things that happened this week is our little concern that the automotive industry at the dealer point of sale is changing. We all know, we all see it. Tesla has definitely been a, a, a game changer in the way that they distribute and sell cars. With that, being, with that being said, the profit points the dealerships are looking for is changing. Do you think as coding manufacturers that Codings are going to be taken out of the hands of detailers and put in the hands of manufacturers at any point moving forward. Short answer: No. Uh, reason being is, yeah, we, we have, yeah, with the detailer, with the accredited network, um, we also operate a lot in dealerships. I think one of the biggest changes, and I think a lot of the dealerships, I think they're living in denial that the internet exists. For example. So you walk into a dealership and there'll be a guy with a, you know, the whole experience, they spend a lot of money there, there's guys with sharp suits, there's very attractive girls giving you cups of coffee and things like that, or could be blokes, I don't know, whatever. Um, and actually, you've done all your research online, you know what you want to buy, you don't need to be sold. Um, in the UK, I'll give an example, they are being squeezed, so the internet exists, people, price you know, they, do, they compare prices all the time, so the margins, you know, the margins actually in, in the UK, BMW lose money on every, every car they sell. Um, so in terms of revenue, and, and in the UK as well, it, 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 you would not want to be a dealer at the moment. So the, they are not allowed to sell finance, They've been, they can't sell gap insurance, all of those things because, you know, suddenly the uh, FCA have realised they've been taking, taking the piss for years and, and extracting way, way too much money for... Uh, you know, much too high margins for that. They're in a bit of a panic. Um, gotcha. And so... So with that being said, you don't think that they're going to, that's going to be a reality, correct? The, the, the issue now, and what is happening, and I think it's probably ha happening here a lot, is they're seeing money going out the door to detailers. They hate that. They absolutely hate that. The solution is to work with dealerships, to getting the detail community working with dealerships, this is something that we are focusing heavily on, Good. Um, and it is something, you know, follow us on this journey. Cool. That's all I'm going to say now. But, you know, that is where it's going to happen. They need those value propositions at the cool. dealership. The manufacturers, 
the dealerships will not stand for it. They will not stand for that money going off the plate. So now what we're going to do is, Ray, we're going we're to mix it up. Go ahead and pass the mic down to Ray. Ray, what's your response to that? Well, the question is, I guess the start is, do we see manufacturers implementing coatings at the OEM level? And my answer is no. I don't know how many people on the panel have visited uh, OEM manufacturers, but I've been to many. Uh, we'll take a, a vehicle like Hyundai, for example. The way Hyundai is built, uh, they don't even paint the car, it's dipped. So the, the panel gets in, it gets dipped, it gets assembled, it's total robotics. The manufacturer's not going to change their production line to add a coating that's going to take from the production line, no matter what the revenue is generating. We all know that car dealers, we can go back into the 50s and 60s, and for those of you who don't know, I have an extensive background in the automobile dealer industry. Um, I've had over 100 employees that did aftermarket financing for some of the largest dealer groups. Today, I currently operate my products and programs in over 8,000 dealers. Uh, we operate in 37 countries. We do OEM port installations. We have a lot of variables. GP or glass parents or transparent is less than 1.5% of our total revenues as a company. So on the dealer level, um, you know, there's been a disconnect between detailers and, and dealerships. Uh, detailers look at dealers as they don't pay us on time if we do work. De uh, dealers look at it as we really don't need the service, we need to sell the paper. Uh, so I, I think for us, and you touched on it, uh, our, our view, my view for uh, the auto buying habit, I think drastically changed. If there wasn't the agreement between the factory and the dealer that existed, uh, they would sell direct to consumers. The national statistic is four in 1,000 people that buy a car have a good experience. We would all be out of business if four in 1,000 people that came into our shop had a good experience. But because of the franchise agreement, they cannot sell direct. That is exactly what we're doing as a company, is we are transitioning, and we're transitioning with a warranty line, to target market the consumer direct before they even buy the car, so that they come in, they buy the warranty from us, and they go to our installer, and our installer submits the coverage and gets paid. Cool. And that's where I think it's heading. There I think it's going to the consumer. And if you think about Saturn, they were probably ahead of the game in General Motors having a one price car where you had a buying experience. It doesn't happen today. My, my, my vision is that dealers will become courtesy drop delivery centers. People will pick up, learn the technology, and they'll service the vehicles. And that's it. And I think it's coming sooner than we think. Very. I'm gonna have to disagree. I think that, uh, I think ceramic coatings will be a major part of the dealership world. They already are, when you look at Simon Eyes. Uh, let's be real, I mean, we all, we all can say whatever, but Simonize is a glass coating that's in a dealership that is larger than probably all six of us up here at the same time. What I think we need to do is educate everybody. You know, if you can get detailers to work with the dealerships, to go in and do it, detailers will have more money during the slow times, the winter times. At the same time, though, you need to get the detailers to there to do it. And as far as like a dealership warranty, things like that, the hardest part about a warranty is, and forgive me, Ray, but when you create a warranty, 85 to 90% of those warranties that the consumer gets when they get their car is financed monthly for like three or $4 amongst the life of the loan. Very difficult. So let's I'm take it back to topic. Can I use well, just because well, you brought me up, I want to just say one thing. That's exactly the reason we created FlexPay. So FlexPay allows you to finance our warranties over time, putting you on the same level field. And I think the question, if I'm not mistaken, was how do manufacturers, not dealers, and I think we went to yeah, dealerships. Not, not, not dealerships. So, okay, I just want to make sure. Thank you. Are they going to be spraying the cars at the factory? Okay. So they're going to be spraying the car at the factory. <clears throat> so I don't know if you guys know this, but you all know... IGL, our largest department in our company is our R&D department. That's the biggest department we have, and uh, we like to learn. We like to try things, uh, you know, DuPont, Bear, Shinitsu, Wack, and BSF are all part of our family. So we do a lot of testing, building, learning. Uh, our company spends a lot of time in Korea. We've been there for the last three months. If you follow our president CEO, you'll see he's been spending a lot of time at Hyundai. So we are working at developing things, but not necessarily coatings. Uh, it's different things to allow the detailers to work with 
the so manufacturer. Are you, guys, are you saying that yes, that the manufacturers are going to be spraying cars at the manufacturer? No, I'm not. I'm saying that the cars are going to come up with something different. Okay. It's going to allow also, depending on the products, at least that we're going to manufacture, that yes. are going to allow the detailers to work closer with the deal with the dealerships. And I think that's the most important thing. And again, going back to Robert, going back to Robert, first of all, I'm glad I'm not in the UK because it sounds like it sucks down there. As far, as far as what he was saying, poor guy. But uh, what he's saying is correct. And I think that it is very, very essential that as companies, we help the detailers build that gap between the detailer and the dealership. It's our responsibility as manufacturers to make the programs work with the detailers and almost make like the introduction to the dealerships so i think if we can do that and help the detailers get in the door and show the detailers so, sorry show the dealerships what the detailers can do that their car cleaners or car washers i won't call them detailers will never be able to do oh yeah so it's more about helping our people bridge the gap bridge the gap so, um, so the, 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 the automobile manufacturers and their R&D departments are basically doing a lot of the same things that you're doing on a, at a constant rate. So they're gonna, they, they believe in their product. They believe, you know, and they're constantly changing the formulations and their application methods and, and all the processes like Jason Rose talked about the other day, the, what the weight on the amount, the amount of weight on the car, how thin the paint is, all that sort of stuff. I don't, I don't think they're gonna do a ceramic application process because it's not part of their it's not part of their mindset how they how they you know coat and prepare a car is like like you you mentioned it's dipped it's it's run through a process and they're they're done right they're not they're not going to do another process i don't think gotcha, gotcha and i think again so we're providing value at the end here right okay. all right i'm going to try to say something no one else has said yet uh, I don't know if I agree or disagree with what the panelists said so far, but um, I think the, the, the right answer to your question is it depends. It depends on the dealerships, what the dealerships decide to do. If they decide just to bring in a higher graded product, better quality product, the manufacturer will eventually start looking down at the dealerships. And if the dealerships make that into a big stream of revenue, they might decide to uh, look into it, uh, selling at an OEM level. Yep. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Another round of questions. So now this time. I just want. Can I add one thing? Absolutely. I don't want this to happen. Yeah. We don't want this I don't to think happen. Any of None of us want this to happen. happen. I, that would suck. So uh, we're going to start out this time. Let's go ahead and start with Joel, and uh, we'll start in the middle. So I'm going to ask one thing. Let's really keep it online. Go off topic. Answer it direct. We'll have an end at the last question to plug your guys' company all you want on something exciting that's happening this year. Um, some brands, the coding brands, are promoting a one-brand policy where they want you to just take and use this no. one brand. Is do you believe in it? No. Okay. Simple as that. I don't think it's a good idea. I think a, a detailer is a business. They're a company, and at the end of the day, they got to use the products and services. We're the tools that they use to make money. We're just like a buffing wheel. And I think it's very imperative that they realize that they've got to use what works for their business. It's important that we support them and we support manufacturing and we support marketing and advertising 100%. But the loyalty aspect of this, in, is, I think people are, are, are taking it to levels that it doesn't need to go. And, and I, I hope that we're all an industry Everyone on this panel, everyone standing here today, and everyone we're, you know, we're speaking to, we need to unite as an industry and realize this is about your careers, it's about your families, it's about your retirements. We're in a business that many of us at a certain age can't continue to operate because our body breaks down before our mind. So um, I might be of a different opinion. I believe that it's up to you as a detailer to decide what brands you want to work with but from a business perspective, and if I was an owner myself of a detailing shop, I would look at it more as, as if it's a restaurant. When you go into a restaurant, especially you know the Asian restaurants where you have 568 different options, and you ask the waiter or waitress what 
what they recommend. And they drop 10 different options for you. I mean, it could just be me, but I hate that. I want to know what the best thing is. I want the, the, the waiter to be an expert at what that person, what they're selling. So for me that, you know, the smaller menu, the better you become as selling your product. You'll be an expert. And uh, I'm also thinking loyalty here, you know, it's a mutual thing. You know, it, it, at least is how we look at it from uh, from Cerami Pro. You know, if you're loyal with us, we're gonna be more loyal to you. And uh, that's the thing, running your business that way is gonna make more profitable. And that's what we're seeing with most successful shops. We have a program, a loyalty program right now. And we're seeing those guys that make that decision of staying laser focused on their business, their product they're selling. We can even look at our product. We don't, that's right, but we don't offer 3,000 different products. We've decided from the beginning to stay focused on coatings, and now we're introducing PPF, but we don't have, we're not chemical guys. So I think that's, that's my best advice to anyone out there trying to figure out what to do with their business. Stay focused, you know, open up to loyalty. It's a mutual thing. I, uh, I think every shop should have options, actually. I, I'll just let it up that but I think the consumer, when they walk in, they, they're coming to you because they know who you are. They found you, you detail cars. They get it. They know what a ceramic coating is. I, I, I think a detailer needs options. You know, I kind of look at it a little differently. Like Peter described the, uh, like going into a restaurant, you know, and I love that idea, I really do. But I also kind of look at it as, we're not just serving food though, you know? Uh, a lot of detail shops, they do paint corrections, clear brawl, they do, it, detailing used to be a detail shop. Now detailers are getting into a variety of different industries, you know, and bringing it together under one house, tent film, things like that. So if a detailer has options to provide the customer or the consumer, the consumer has a better chance to pick a choice. I, it, 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 again, it boils down to education. It's from us and the detailers. There you go. Um, so, I mean, talking to detailers that, uh, you know, and we've discussed various coatings, is, is they seem to appreciate having variety and options in their menu and what they're doing. So. They have different features, they have different durabilities, they have different, uh, you know, refractive index, they have different things that they want to provide for their, for their customer. They have different price points that they want to provide for their customer. They want to have, you know, they just want to have all these features that are available. And I think that, you know, having one company provide all those features is difficult. It can be done and, and all these people are, are providing more and more options. But uh, it's hard to provide every option. So I think, yeah, I think, I think more options with that. Okay, fine. Finally, I mean, echoing a lot of what's been said already. Short answer is no, I don't believe. Hello, hello. <laughs> Short answer is I believe it is, it is not a healthy thing to restrict. The reason being is the way I know personally, and you know, we've been developing product now for nearly 20 years that backward and forward relationship that we have with the detailers um, I don't know if Kelly Harris is in the audience here but Kelly Harris if you don't know him um, I call him our Jesus he was the first detailer actually to realize what we were doing and see the performance of it and he has been kicking my ass for the last 20 years and I welcome that to an extent um, but it is if anything is wrong you know, we need to have that open relationship. And the other thing, we will notice very quickly if we're doing something wrong, if we start, if sales start going down. Competition is healthy. Competition is healthy, and Renny, you and I were talking about this yesterday, we're only touching a minuscule portion of the market. You know, we go up another half a percent, one percent, your shops are gonna be double booked, you know? so. Sorry, this is going to be a bit of a little bit, one more, one more point on this, but then there is a balance. I think to Peter's point of too many choices, I agree with that as well. We see, too, you know, we see some detailers and they just jump on every single accreditation that's, that's going and they have no intention of ever using them with some of the accreditations. You know, we have some shops with maybe four different lines and you know, I go with them and say, oh, how much of that one have you used? 
what we're going to use with it. <laughs> Why are you keeping it there? That is just confusing to the consumer. Uh, and I think we have found, we've, we've had this discussion with a couple of detailers where suddenly they've gone from, let's say, four offerings or three offerings, whatever, whatever it is, they've some, suddenly gone to, oh yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do 10. The, the customer's going to love that. Their sales are just going to That's like it. that. And then we've gone, hey guys, maybe try doing three again, and it's gone back up again. So yeah, it's, it's not an easy answer, but net of it, competition is great. So here's the deal that each one of you just brought up some valid points I've never thought of on both going single brand and going multiple brands. So I think it comes down to where the individual party is. Uh, here's kind of a thought is that we start putting committees together. You guys could even come up with other brands that you're open to your team being co-branded with. And that's just an idea. Because there's, there's, there's a lot of guys and a, gal, a lot of gals that love all of your guys' products. And so I think keeping an open mind to that, it might actually increase your guys' sales. Just, just to keep an open mind. So my, my answer is yeah. Well, you're short. I said you should have a short answer. I'm going to count to 10. <laughs> you know what, Robert, it's 100% also. Some of the detailers that have 10 brands call us, say, hey, we'd like to use IGL, try something different. You know, and they start ramming off what they're using. I keep telling them, I said, I don't think we're the right brand for you. You're too confused already. I think you need to focus on something and move forward. The other thing real quick for the detailers is there's price points, as he said. You know, you might want a ceramic coating for three, four grand, but you also have customers, you know, I look at it as the Bronx or Manhattan. They're not very far apart, but the price difference in both areas are gonna be very different. So if you can't adapt to the different prices because of your customers, then you might just, just say, listen, I discriminate. I don't want this type of customer. I only want this type of customer. Some of you might do that. I don't know. So I agree. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to school these guys. I'm going to school you detailers. Stop. Stop jumping around so much. Stop spending tens of thousands of dollars an unneeded product, looking for the holy grail that's gonna save your life. Go out and sell some shit and make some green. Simple as that, amen? Amen. All right, gentlemen, good job. So uh, this gets into some tricky stuff. It seems social media is a coding war zone with division, mudslinging, and some ugly debates, all of which is a black eye on the detailing community. Uh, especially when consumers come in and they see these wars happening. How do your your brand plan to combat this ugly part of the coatings industry? So we're going to start, who hasn't started off yet? Who hasn't kicked it? So we're going to start it, we're going to kick it with Dave. There you go. Yeah, I, I like kind of being second. Um, <laughs> <laughs> or third, yeah. Um, so do that one more time. So, social media. Social media. Social media. And how are you going to... Okay, well, social media, obviously... So let's is, go back. Let's go back yeah. real quick. Okay. So all the wars that go on. You know, right. this brand's better, this brand's better. Hey, screw you, screw you, screw you. Right. All social that, media is just anonymous, you know, forum for people to jump out and say pretty nasty things. Uh, you know, but I think, you know, being inclusive in our own social media presence is the most... is, is the best part. PNS sales, we always take like uh, a very uh, wholesome, you know, perspective on on what people say. If people say bad things about our product. We'll try and we'll try and get back to them and be very responsible uh, to them back, even if they weren't very responsible to us. I think leading by example is is obviously the best uh, way to deal with that. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. Lead by example and and be responsible. Yeah, lead by example, of course. That's uh, our job, I guess. And uh, what, what we communicate down to our sales reps is basically, you know, don't get into these wars. You know, stay out of them. Present, present the, the, the war starter, whatever you want to call him, with facts. Drop the facts and back out. Stay away from it. I think there's not much we can do about it. It's going to continue, except from you know, trying to stay out. I think that's yeah, that's. You know, I think that you bring up the value point. Here's one thing I'm going to challenge you that the mafia does. 
if we see one of our foot soldiers going out and batting another brand, they're gone. We cut them right then and there. It's not about profits. We cut them right then and there. So it's just an idea is that your performers, when they go out and they start doing that, is that we want to be a shining star. And so I think that if you guys have a no, a no tolerance policy, that's going to go a long ways too. They call me the chief drama officer in our company because I don't put up with bullshit. They go in the penalty box and then they're gone. We, amongst here, Barry and myself, Peter, I, I don't have the occasion to talk to Robert. I just met Robert for the first time. But we've spoken many times and we've had, where my installers have said shit about their stuff, shit about his stuff, or vice versa. And we've tried to address it because we're all in the same belief. Humans are humans are gonna say stupid shit. Okay? But at the same time, our reps, yes, they have to do what they have to do, but it's also our responsibility to step in and stop it. And you know what, we, and Reddy and I had this discussion just yesterday. We had somebody who spends a lot of money, three, four thousand dollars a month. And I removed him and he asked me why. And I said, because you don't represent what we represent. When you act like an idiot, we have 3,000 installers in the U.S., that means you're going to make 2,999 other ones look like an idiot. All the guys that are wearing pink and black or green or red and black or red, when you do something stupid, think of everybody else that's in that company, you just made them all look stupid. So before you start typing, and we have a one policy here, if you had a drink, put your phone away. Everybody should follow that policy. You had a drink, put your damn phone away. Pick it up tomorrow morning, and when you go on, I'm cool with people putting stuff on what they've done, how they've done it, it's great, and I get the fact that there's always, well, we're going to do this better than CP or whatever. But, guys, have fun with it, but as soon as it crosses that line, if I hear about it and you're wearing green, you're going to go somewhere else. I'm telling you right now. To me, it's simple. I'll use an analogy I told my children when they grew up. What you post, what you put out there, stays out there. So what you think might be a good post today may not be a good post next year. It could hurt you. It could come back and get you. I think what we need to do, and something you just brought up, and I'm, I'm happy to start a lead on this. I'll, I'll start the program. We join a program together. We enter into contractual agreements, and we lead by example, and we take a stance, similar to what you're saying, Rennie, on Detail Mafia, that if someone posts something that's derogatory and negative, it does impact and negatively impact people's livelihoods. But more importantly, it confuses the hell out of a consumer. Think about what customers see when they read this stuff. They end up saying none of this can be good. And that's the problem that ends up happening with all these posts. It's perfectly great to believe in what team you're on if that's how you want to run your business. But you're in an industry and the industry has to take the high road in order to create a level that's going to take this industry from where it is today, where it was five years ago, to where it's going to be in five years from today. And it starts right now. So um, I'm a big proponent of, of, of change. Gary? Uh, um, you know, I just think that quite simple, it needs to stop. That's it. You see somebody bashing another brand, bashing another person, you know what you do? Just ignore it and move on. You look at the source nine times out of ten. They're mostly insecure with themselves, their life, things around them. If they want to take a chance to bash somebody, you know what? It, it's going to be hard for all of us to stop. We've tried. You know, in the last, many don't know, in the last year, Joel and I have actually kind of come together a little bit, worked out some of our differences. You know, we see something I send to Joel, Joel sends it to me. We just say, hey, can we, what can we do here? We try to work with it. You know, I've done the same thing with Peter. You know, I really don't know. Robert, you know, I'm glad I got to meet you. But at the end of the day, it makes us all look like a bunch of douchebags. I hate to say it, but it's true. Somebody, somebody wants to bash you or bash a brand, it, it does nothing for the industry. It does nothing for us. The only thing it makes them look like is a piece of shit who is insecure about themselves. I'm sorry to say, but that's the truth. You know, we need to step forward. Not one of those guys growing up who had bashed other brands growing up in the industry. I, I'm one of the guys that followed and literally made those mistakes. I get it. We all get stupid. We all make mistakes. At some point, though, we all got to make that change for the better. And if we don't, we're all walking around doing the same damn thing, looking like a bunch of dumbasses. I hate to say it, but if you have the time to bash somebody, 
you lack an insecurity somewhere, some way, especially if you have to take the time out of your day, five minutes, ten minutes to make a post and say this guy's a jerk or this guy's an asshole or this brand sucks, you really have nothing better to do. A, you mean you're insecure and not making money. Well, on the line. Cut them out of your life. Hey, I'm glad that you feel comfortable sharing yourself. I mean, I think you're a little shy about it, though. You know? I'm giving the damn mic. <laughs> I'm holding them. I'm being nice. Yeah, there you go. Um, I see it. I don't see it as a big issue, if I'm being honest. I think that I think people now are coming to terms. You know, we've all been growing up now with uh, social media and so forth. And I think we are, as a species, growing up. We're, we're learning to deal with it a bit better. I mean, I think, I think the normal cycle you see is somebody making something stupid, yeah, perhaps at the, they've, they've had a few at midnight or, or so forth, and quite quickly, they hang themselves, you know? And, and, and the response is, and I watch it, and I go, yeah, probably in about four post times, I'm going to go, hang on a minute, <laughs> this, is, this isn't right. I think two things I would answer to on that, and things I've been banging on about, is quality, pedigree, those shine through. And one thing I think I'd like to touch on as well, I think as an industry, you know, we are, it's a jealous, everybody is very jealous and they're very guarded about their reputation. Totally understand that. It's very tempting to start hacking into people. And I think it goes, goes with the territory. And I think organizations like the IDA are an important factor within that Amen. Amen. and I think I think you know the more we can come together and this is a this is a piece that I've already noticed you know I, sorry to kind of be use profanity here but I, I I saw detailing in about the this is in the UK I can talk about in about 2005 six seven that it looked like it, it was in danger of disappearing up its backside because consumers you were listening said that it looked like he was going to crap it out right you know <laughs> But I think, and, and now it's on a much, much healthier playing field. And the reason for that is, you know, there was that much, because it was relatively new, people were fighting each other on open forums all the time. And as a consumer, you must always think of your consumer. The consumer was looking at that and going, this is a load of bullshit. No, you know, I don't, right. I don't want to be involved with this. So I think the more organizations like the IDA, you know, we ultimately, we're all in the business, business of selling bottles of product. End of story. Organizations like the IDA, they have great structure. Detailing Mafia have great structure to withhold standards, and and you know, and I think people show commitment to that by being members of organizations let, such as let that. Let me jump into something. I've had an interesting conversation with each one of your camps this week. There's a purpose for me being there. Is that again? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna admit my weaknesses. I was one of the bare knuckle guys. Matt will tell you. You know, I've been with. But each one of your camps I've spoke to and I've seen a lot of mellowing going on. Peter's camp, I'm going to give you a little credit right now. It's nothing against you gentlemen. I just happen to have more contact um, with their team this week. I think whatever you're doing inside your organization is wonderful. Because we've seen this young man and a lot of your team really try hard to do the lead by example in that, in that regards. And, and again, I'm not saying anything against that you guys aren't, but the contact that these guys have made with me, and I've seen their demeanor, I got to give you a high five, dude, because you know what? That's what we need in this industry is leadership that's going in. We're going to answer that way. So that's pretty badass. You guys, the same thing. It's just again, they've reached out nonstop. Your team, you guys were sucking up. That's what it was. Oh, they did a great job. They did a great job. So now we get into the fun stuff. Okay, we're going to get into the fun stuff. We, Diane and I, had a vision eight years ago to bring everybody together. We had 50 people show up the first year. We we're blown away. I was going to have a couple scars with like 10 guys, right? 50 people showed up. The next year, 100 people showed up. This year, 480 to be exact showed up. The common, the common message we heard at that party, because we had mafia out there, which we're flying all. I mean, we're like. We're like an international house of pancakes when it comes to <laughs> coatings. You know, we've got it's, it's every color out there, you know. These guys were ambassadors at the event. There was one common request that happened at that party. Do you know what it was? They want 
all the major coding companies there in power, united, to come together at that event, like we've done with other manufacturers, is if you come there, we've got every, every chemical company there, in the first year, they're like this. You know, then now you've got two Cody, you got two chemical companies leaning against each other, being buddies. So my challenge is you guys, if you can make it next year, here's also a challenge. We gave away about seven thousand dollars worth of giveaways. We're going to change that next year. We're going to. I just talked to somebody yesterday. I, I'm a small thinker. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a street rat. Our goal as a detailing industry is to pick one, two, or three causes that are important to us. And we're going to donate $100,000 to a cause or causes next year at our event. We want you guys to be part of that. So the invite's there. And I know you guys are up, but the last thing you want to do is have to go to another event, right? At SEMA. But we want to see United Front. We want to get the coding company in there. So I'm not even going to ask you a commitment or anything else. That's not right. Because I know you guys, your time so precious. But instead of doing that, we're putting the invite out. I want you guys there desperately. As an international, we're going to all hang out, have a good time, and we're going to raise some funds. And the reason why I'm very selfish is that we're going to put we're going to put us as an industry on the map with these guys and show them that we ain't screwing around. When we get donate a six-figure donation to something, that's going to take and raise some eyebrows, and it's going to change our entire industry from the floor up. Would you agree? So please accept my invitation right now to be involved. Now, this is the real fun side. We're going to try to keep it about a couple minutes each. I want you guys to go through and take and share something that is really exciting this year at SEMA about your company. How's that? So now we get bragging rights. And again, this is a time for all of you to keep a really open mind and listen to what these companies are doing for us. Because let me tell you, I think a lot of you guys wanted to see us rock and sock and robot it out. There's a reason why these guys are here, because they're foundational layers. They set the pavers that we are walking on today. Barry, you're here because you're a guy like me that's a street rat. And you came out of the detailing industry and you put a coating on. That's why you're here. So I wanted you to represent the guys that where we came from. Does that make sense? So it's a very pointed purpose that you're here. These guys are giants compared to you and me, right? I mean, if it wasn't for, if it wasn't for Bob and Dave, you know, I wouldn't have a product. You do testimony to you I wouldn't so my hands off to you for being a little guy thinking big but now with that let's go ahead and take in uh, let's start with Joel what's exciting going on with your product well I'm just gonna if you can all write this down somewhere unreasonable group I don't know if you've heard of it IGL is one of the selected companies this is a thing that's invited only what it is, is it's an invitation only for companies creating impact as per the United Nations Development Goal. So in regards to creating job, safe chemicals, safe manufacturing, to help change the world to a better place, and again, to safety of the installers. So our founder owner, Chen Shik Young, who's not here today, he's actually in the UK uh, with Barclays, who's the founding uh, idealist behind the Unreasonable Group. And again, this is a, a, a something pretty cool. You all need to go check it out on your computer and, uh, and you know what? Just look at what it's all about because we can all make a little change within our own businesses to help the world be a better place. So that's what's cool about what's going on right now at IGL. Right on. Good job, What's going on in GTEC? Um, yeah, we're now at, I would call this base camp where we are in the US now. Um, and in answer back to that piece of breaking that barrier between detailers and dealerships, that's where our head is at right now. We've done that to, a, to quite a large extent in the UK. It's now 40% of our turnover in the UK. Here, we're doing nothing. So that is a piece where we are going to be holding a lot of hands, helping a lot of people net that. Um, because, do you know what? Even though a lot of you guys think dealerships are kind of close to the devil in terms of the way you prepare cars, they are. Yeah, most of them are, but they don't know any better. And also, the demand now is really strong. They, they get it. Their asses are getting kicked, they're losing revenue, they want it. 
and that is something that we are developing a very, very comprehensive program on that. Not only that, also with Marine, it's been a product line that has been taking quite a while to come out. The product line is done, and that is another area we are putting a lot of effort, time and effort into it. So it doesn't matter if it's, you know, we will have a pricing structure from, doesn't matter if it, from a jet ski to a super yacht. So this is designed to go into the brokerage piece. I won't go talk too much about it, <laughs> too many tricks away, but that is a piece that we are working on as well. And we've made a lot of advances with that. And also product development. I mean, you know, we are looking at upgrades to everything all the time. And uh, yeah, we've got some exciting things. I can't really told you. Right. Yeah. Thank you, Brian. So I'm going to be the kind of the weak link on this because I'm not the promotional uh, direct person in our in our company. I you know just kind of keep things running. But Bob and I's philosophy has always been you know to bring people together. Uh, we aren't stopping that. That is not going anywhere. We really uh, obviously you can see right here. Right, and this is amazing. I'm amazed at the number of people. I'm really amazed and really grateful for this group. Uh, I am. Uh, I expected to be impressed. I am much more impressed. You guys are amazing. You've done amazing things over, you know, what appears to be a short period of time, but you've all worked really hard at it. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the competitiveness has, has helped everybody grow. We feel the same thing. So we're going to continue along with that, bring, bring people together, and, and that's going to be what we're going we're gonna to focus on in the future as well. Um, one of the things about us is we're, we're going to promote just being happy. Um, you know, we think positivity, happiness, it spreads. It's like a virus. You know, you have one guy down, everybody's down. So our biggest thing for 2020 is focusing on happiness, building a quality of a life. That's something I, I've been wanting to begin with. Um, however, with SB3, we were, you know, we're two and a half years old right now. Uh, we'll be three in April. So we're still a young company. Um, I think we made a pretty good impact on the industry. We want to continue to do that. We just recently, out here at SEMA, released a compound, a polish, prep product. Um, we worked with an aftercare line for the consumer after we did the coatings. And you're, you're going to see me kind of go back to my grassroots, I think, over the next year. As a company, we have, we have, we have the coatings that we, we're proud of. We have the aftercare line. You may see a few products there. But I think what you're going to really see is, obviously, with us releasing a compound, polish, and a prep product, I, this is where I have fun now, you know, for me personally, even with the industry. So you, you're going to see me back in that sector of the game really hard. Um, in the future, you may see some sandpaper. You may see some new polishing pads. Great ideas that are, that are here, ready to come. Um, but our, our industry as a company is we're just here to grow. We're be here to be happy, and we're here to just work our asses off for every one of our customers. That's the bottom line. Thank you. There you go. Good job. Um, so for us, it's probably a lot long-winded than I can get into, but, you know, as Glass Parents, I think the interesting thing we did is we found a niche in the market space that was neglected, which was glass products. Obviously, every on this panel now is even focused on glass pad, uh, products as well as the detail industry, uh, but we really did that with focusing on retention. Uh, and try to drive customers back. I think, you know, the imperative thing for consumer satisfaction or product is not being sold something that's oversold, being overpromised and underdelivered. And I think, you know, with retention and getting clients back into these shops, business owners have to open up to, uh, you know, making more money and having long-term sustainability within a customer as, as not a single sell, but a multi-sell. Uh, for us, we launched something that we're really excited about called Transparent. Uh, Transparent is a full line of warranties that basically touch every aspect of the car. So we cover uh, exterior coatings uh, that are selected by us uh, through industry leaders. We cover interior. We cover full PDR repair. We cover tire, rim, and cosmetic damage. We cover key fob repair and or replacement. We cover headlight restoration and or replacement. And we cover full glass chip repair and or replacement. So for us, it's about launching a full warranty platform that, you know, some people up here might feel I was a competitor. Uh, when I launched GP, it wasn't about a product, it was about building a network. The vision was what we launched last night. It just took us three years to build a network to release the vision. Uh, and I hope the industry has an open mind to it because 
I think just like Coatings did where it elevated their annual revenues and their single point revenues per customer base, warranty platforms will do that. And the unique thing that we did, probably a lot different than everybody up on this panel, is we MSRP'd the platform so that we could strategically mark to the end user and not only drive, you know, you talked about somebody earlier said moving the, the needle a half for 1%. Think about the statistic. 14 million new cars sold, 35 million used cars sold last year at a dealership. 70% of the people that walked into that dealership walked out with a warranty coverage. You guys are ultimately the car care professionals. They're not. How much better would it be for them to be able to purchase a warranty at a fraction, a fraction of the a price from a dealership and now they're your customer. And you, as a detailer, can expand your network because if you do the repair on the specific product, you're gonna get paid again. You have more revenue coming into your shop. The unique thing about everyone up here is I might actually become their biggest customer because if they have product failure, I'm gonna buy direct. So I welcome everybody and uh, you know, at this point, we are extraordinarily proud of what we did last night. Um, and I think hopefully everyone will find that it's industry changing. It would have been really easy. I own a manufacturing facility, most people know that, to come out with a, co a coating line. The industry didn't need it. I'm looking at the industry, not my pocket, not what's good for my business in that aspect of chemicals, because where we're going is far superior than if we would have rolled out and created another product in the market space we don't need. So, uh, for, for, so for, um, for you guys who know me and uh, our team at Ceramic Pro, our objective has always been to uh, drive traffic to you guys out there. It's, uh, Renny, you know this, we talked about this six years ago. That, that's, that's the key here. You know, we can talk about all these uh, solutions we have here, you know, with, with uh, what we can do at forums and so on, but it comes down to one thing and that's money. If our installers, if our shops out there make money, Everything is going to happen automatically. We're going to have an association. We're going to all, you know, it's going to be a lot easier to bring a thousand people to your your event at SEMA next year. So our focus has always been that, and um, as you know, we uh, we put a lot of time and effort into generating leads to our clients. We currently uh, generate about twenty thousand leads a month to our guys, and we have a specific program just for that. For just to bring bring in business to your shops, and yeah, of course we have new launches, new products as well as everyone else has at Seema. It's like a prerequisite to be at Seema. It seems like uh, we have a new uh, a PPF film, which uh, which has amazing characteristics that we believe will be a game changer. Uh, we have a new glass coating. We uh, also have uh, something that I think we'll be alone with, and that's a, that is a new shop management software for all our installers. And it's, it's basically designed to help our installers look more professional, work more efficiently, and uh, just drop the post-it note, basically. Um, I, I was talking about leads here, and uh, one really big thing that we got going on right now, which I think a lot of you have seen already in our booth, is our new production. We're releasing our first million dollar video for uh, advertising basically the industry, for the industry, that we believe will take us to the next level, the coding industry to the next level. And again, we believe it's about creating awareness. And I'm going back to that again, you know, I want to invite you guys to come on board this, this new, let's start a new association, let's create this thing, let's build awareness together, let's be the, the dairy farmers, you know, that, that, that help advertise milk. And in that way, we're all going to come out as winners. The market is huge, it's growing. I don't think we need to compete. I think it's more about you know, working together, creating the awareness. Amen. I like milk. Okay, here's a challenge. Gentlemen, thank you very much. To bring these guys together, they're very busy. This is an expensive investment for them in time because this is a very expensive show. So now I'm going to switch this. You guys just did a great job. Your team's done a great job. You've put so much on the map. All of you have had a, foot, a fingerprint left on taking an industry and lifting it up to new levels. So detailers, let's give them a big round of applause. 
God. This isn't coming from them. So if the arrows are going to come, shoot them at my back, not theirs. You guys got to stop screwing around. You got to stop jumping and bailing from product to product to product to product. You got to stop treating your businesses like it's a damn hobby. You need to become educated. I'm not selling my training. You need to go to junior college. You need to be skilled in finance. You need to be skilled in business. Start treating this like it's a legitimate business instead of a damn hobby. The other thing is, is that you've got to support one another. Stop bare fisting. That's gone. We have no room for that in this industry. There's too many of us that work too damn hard. Stop crapping where you eat. The other thing is, both in your industry and your communities, stop taking from them and start putting back into them. If you want to see real rewards, start putting deposits, not just withdrawals, into your community and into this industry. When you think, and I, I want to slap people and they say, what's in the IDA for me? You know what? It's where you make your damn living. That's where it's at. And if you can't realize that, you're not a business person, you're a wannabe. If you can't invest in this, your future, then don't expect any of us to invest in it. Simple as that. Now, with that said, you guys, in 2006, Jim Gogan and I came here. Mark Johnson and I came here. A handful, Rod Leitner. We had nine detailers get together in 2006. That's every detailer we could find at SEMA. I want to applaud each and every one of you, even if you're not here, even if you're watching and you were here earlier, even those that are going to get here next year. I want to give, we're going to give you guys a hand for investing in your future and getting your butts here and learning a lot and networking. So thank you for investing in your business. I also got to call out somebody very special, is Bob and Dave Phillips, who give me the opportunity work, to work with all these. We've got a brand right over there, Cody, but yet I've worked with each one of these to take and build up the industry. It takes big, as my wife says, it peaches to take and allow a spokesperson and a partner on a brand to go out and work with other people. So on behalf of, of me, uh, thank you guys for allowing me to do this. Now, Pat and I are going to work. We're going to put on a Ceramic Pro event where we're going to double up and we're going to do a double black Ceramic Pro event at our shop in, in California. We've already done it. We're doing Joel's second one. We're doing one with Barry next month. We're doing, a, we're doing an IGL event in our Big Bear location next, this month. So we want to take it over. I'm doing events with you. You know? Yeah, we have, a, we, have, we have one next spring with you guys. I'm going to your summit. I might be going to your summit in Europe. So there's all kinds of things going on. I want to open up myself to all of you because you know what? Bob and Dave allow me to do it. Any way that I can help you guys and bring this thing together tight, you know, you can reach out to me anytime. You're a busy guy. If you guys use and abuse me to take your companies to the next level because you know what it does, we know what it does. It's going to build up everything. So guys, on behalf of the entire industry, thank you guys for attending, but more importantly, thanks for the time out of your busy day. We sure appreciate it. So, uh, Auto Geek, you guys see my shirt. It started out as a joke. Uh, Chris, what are they? What, what's the tagline? Rennie Doyle for president. Rennie Doyle, hashtag Rennie Doyle for president. Or oh, oh, those, yeah. Rennie Doyle for president and, uh, and uh, write in Rennie. And then hashtag write in Rennie. And the reason why is I would love to get some press in the detailing industry. And when, they're, when they come out of any of the, the press, I think we already have a news agency coming out from L.A. And I'm going to be polishing a car answering questions. Because that's just how we roll. So, hey, guys, thanks a lot. Have a great rest of the team. Take care, guys.